exalt his name together. There are a few of us in the house of worship this morning. Many of you are joining us on Facebook Live from the warmth of your homes. But we've come together this morning to give God glory and honor and praise. And so we ask that you join us this morning as the ministry of music comes forth to lead us in our praise and worship. To this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship Christ. Lord, worship him, cry, cry, Lord. We have, we have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house. yourself so forget about yourself concentrate on him and worship him so forget so about forget about yourself concentrate on him and worship him so forget about so yourself forget about yourself concentrate on, concentrate on him
morning. Thank you for being the God you are. Thank you for all that you've done this far. God, we thank you for food on our table. We know we serve a God who is able, and so we come just to say thank you. Let us look to the Father in prayer. God, we come, God, with that gratefulness and thankfulness on our hearts that the music ministry just sang about. God, we come saying thank you this morning. God, as we look back over what you've done this far, God, there is a thank you that just cries from our lips, God. As we look back over the past week, the past months, the past years, God, we come realizing, God, that it is you and you alone who has sustained us on the journey, God. And for that, God, we are eternally grateful, God, and we say thank you. God, we thank you that you touched us with your finger of love this morning, and opened our eyes so that we could see a brand new day that we have never seen before. God, we come thanking you, God, though, that even though we didn't see the sun rise, God, we know that the S-O-N rose, God, and so we got up this morning to press our way to the house of praise and worship this morning, despite the cloudy weather, God, despite the cold, to just raise our hands to come together in hearts and minds and say thank you. God, we've come this morning for a worship experience, God. We've come this morning expecting to hear from you, God. We've come this morning expecting to see you, God, spiritually in this worship experience. So, God, we invite you in this morning to come and reign and dwell and sit among us, God. We want to feel you in our hearts, God, because the reality is, God, there's some of us, God, that over the past week, God, We've experienced some highs and some lows, God. But we know, God, that even in the midst, we're still in your hands. And so, God, we come looking to you, God. We come looking to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from you. God, we come lifting up Reverend Clarence Green, who will bring the word of God this morning. We pray right now for the man of God to bring the word, God, that you have already deposited in him. God, we know that it's a right now rhema word, God, that will help us, God, that as we leave from the worship experience, God, we'll know that we have had an encounter with you. So, God, we come to you this morning thanking you, God. We thanking you, thanking you, God, for the shelter over our heads because, God, we realize that there are some who slept out in the cold last night. And so, God, for those things that we often take for granted, God, we just want to stop right now and say thank you. For, God, for every morsel of food that you provided on the table this week, God, we say thank you. For clothes, God, that you provided that we put on our backs, God, we say thank you. For modes of transportation, be it a car, God, or even if it was just our legs, God, that we used to get from point A to point B, God, we say thank you. So now, God, we invite you into this worship experience. Have your way in this place, God. Have your way in every home of every person who is watching us virtually this morning. God, sit with them, touch them, God, so that they can hear and receive from you. 
and we shall forever, God, give you all of the honor, give you all of the praise, and give you all of the glory, because it is you, God, who was born in a manger, yet died on a tree to save humanity. And for that, God, we are grateful, and we give you the honor and praise this morning. In your darling son Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. of praise. Our scripture reading for this morning is come the, coming from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10, and it reads as follows. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come, came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The word of God for the people of God. Now let us all say, thanks be unto God. Let us now worship in song.
Girls without homes Living out in the street And the drug habits Some say They just can't eat Mothers and robbers No place to be safe You've been my protection want to do a short altar prayer um, before he comes the Lord placed it in my heart um, to do this you may or may not have seen on the news yesterday that um, actress Regina King lost her 26 year old son to suicide and just a few weeks ago there was a baseball raised um, I can't remember his name I think his last na name was Ramirez he was 28 years old and he committed suicide. And um, just a few weeks ago, the community resource officer that used to ride the streets here out here in Progress Village, and when we had summer camp here a few years ago, he would stop and buy the kids snow cones. He committed suicide about three to four weeks ago. And mental health is an issue that we often don't speak much about. But in the world right now, in everything that's going on in the world, there are people who are suffering, and they're suffering in silence. And they get to the point that they can't take it anymore. And then they take their lives. And so God placed it on my heart this morning to pray for those who are suffering mentally. We often hear about those who are suffering physically and need a healing. But there are many around us, and a lot of times there are people that we aren't even aware of who are right in our presence day in and day out, who are often suffering um, from mental health issues in silence. And so we want to lift those people up this morning, or if you are under the sound of my voice and you are watching virtually, this is just a message that even in the midst of what you're going through, 
God still loves you. And so let us lift to God in prayer. God, we come to you right now, lifting up those, God, who are suffering from mental health issues in silence. God, we come lifting up those who think that there's no way out but to take their own lives. God, we pray that you would touch them so that they can come to know you, God, and know that even in the midst of every struggle, God, you were right there with them because you said in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, we lift those people up to you now, right now, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would wrap your arms around them, that they would right now, in this very moment, sense a comfort, God, that they have never felt before, God, and that they would come to know, God, that it is you that is walking with them every single step of the way. God, we don't only lift up those who are suffering mentally, God, but become know, knowing that there's those who are also suffering, God, in their physical bodies. God, just as you were Jehovah Rapha in the body, God, we know that you are Jehovah Rapha in the mind as well. So, God, we come to you asking, God, that you would rain down among them right now. Pour your spirit out among them, God. Touch them in their hearts, in their bodies. And then, God, we pray for those as well who are suffering in this um, financial distress right now, God, because we know that there is inflation, God. We know the prices of things are going up, God. We know, God, that there are those who don't know where they will live next month, God, because the cost of housing, God, has increased so rapidly. God, we lift them up to you now, and we ask, God, that you will continue to provide and be there for them. God, we know you to be the provider. We know you to be a healer. So, God, we're just asking you to do what you do, God, and let them know, God, that you are there with them and that you love them. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. Now we will prepare for the word of God. Worrying out the stories. That's when I let go and let God. Let God have his way. Soon as I stop worrying. Worrying out the stories. Let go and let God. You got to get an understanding. 
what it means to let go and let God. Because when you let go and you let God have his way, everything seems to work out. Let go and let God. It's me, oh Lord. Right now, standing. Right now in the need. Lord, I ask that you anoint me right now, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, let Clarence Green sit down, oh Heavenly Father, so that you can stand up and let your work be done right now in this place. In Jesus' name. And we all say amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the parter openeth, and the sheep hears his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from. They know not the voice of strangers. It is something about a gate. See, a gate, we boast about a gate to live in a gated community. We have gates leading into our fence yards to keep out what we don't want in and to keep in what we want. See, we have locks to reinforce our security with our gates, which makes us feel secure in our own home. But most of us have fences that really would not be that hard to climb. Uh -huh. A gated community is not that secure. See, when we go to a gated community, we may have to call someone to come by and scan a card just to let us in. Amen. Or we just sit and wait a little while and somebody will drive by and we just creep on in behind them. See, gated communities are not that hard to enter unchecked. Jesus gains a lot of attention with bold claims. See, he told the 5,000 looking for another meal, I am the bread of life. He went to the temple and declared, I am the light of the world. He was using the Hebrew word, he -ah. God used this name when he introduced himself to Moses. See, Je Jesus is boldly claiming to be equal with God. He is claiming to be God. Jesus' final confrontation in the temple at the end of the festival booth made it very clear. Jesus ended his debate with the religious, religious rulers with this statement. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. Now the people said, you aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you have seen Abraham? Jesus answers and says, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was even born, I am at the point that they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus was hidden from them and left the temple. So now as Jesus was leaving the era, he probably came into an area where shepherds were prevailing. He would have been standing in the midst of green pastures. Anybody know anything about Green pastors will yeah, understand yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about right now. Perhaps over to his side, he has made it so a muddy brick stru structure with a small single entrance. 
to how to see at night. I want y'all to hold on to that point because it's going to be very important. So he turns to the crowd around him and says, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of the shepherd, sheepfold, rather than going through the gate, must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep recognizes his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. It's something about knowing the voice of your shepherd. See, when you know the voice of your shepherd, you know which way to go. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they do not know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration, did not understand what he meant. They did not understand what he meant. See, it is important that we understand what he means right now. First, let's understand the sheep. When you think of sheep, sheep are considered a prey, opposed to a predator. Since they are the prey, they like to gather in herds. Since there is safety in numbers, this makes them social animals. If a sheep is knocked over on his back, he cannot get up on his own. So he needs some assistance with getting turned back over. See, being social animals, sheep are inclined. They are inclined to follow a leader. See, this instance is so strong that they have been known to even follow a leader over a cliff, if that's where he led them. They are always seeking to establish and reestablish who is the leader by headbutting, poking with their horns, shoulder shugging, blocking with their body. Sheep will follow the sound of the voice they recognize and will run from the voice contrary to the one they don't know. See, see, here, Jesus is comparing sheep to people. Jesus is comparing sheep to people. See, we are social people. We desire to gather in numbers. We gather in numbers in the church. Some gather in numbers in the park. Yeah. Some gather in number, numbers in local bars. Yeah. But the fact is, we gather in numbers. Yes. Why? Because there is safety in numbers. Yes. We feel secure when we're around others. Yes. Often when we have been knocked over by our circumstances, anybody been knocked over by their circumstances? Yes. Anybody been, been, been put down because of who they are or where they're at? Uh, see, sometimes you just may, may need a little assistance. Yes. See, that's why we gather in numbers. Because when you are knocked over, there's somebody on your side right there to give you assistance and lift you right back up. So we gather in numbers for security. We are. We are the prey. In the spiritual realm, we have an enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. In the physical realm, we are the prey in materialism. An advertisement that tempts us with false reality. Yes. They lead us to follow the leader that they may be more bent on our destruction than our security. Yes. This also leads us to follow the voice of deception because we have grown accustomed to this voice. See, so what this is saying is we get accustomed to the voice that is leading us to do wrong yes. than getting accustomed to the voice that is leading us to do right. right. Yes. See, we'd rather be astray than to be on the right path. Yes. So we got to get accustomed to hearing the right voice. Yes. The voice. We.
we also butt heads, shoulder shrug, attempting to establish our place in authority. We desire to have things our way, and we are willing to push and shove whoever we need to, whatever we need to, to get where we want to, to get to where we want to be at. But it's not about where you want to be at. It's not uh, about you. See, next, let's look at this thief and a robber. See, we, 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 we get lost because do you even know who the thief and the robber is? See, they don't enter through the gate, but rather they try to sneak over a wall. The reason they don't go through the gate is because there is a gatekeeper at the gate. See, see it's not unusual for shepherds to bring their sheep into Jerusalem during this time. They would be in a central pen where all the flock would be in the herds would be held. A gatekeeper would have the responsibility of maintaining the security of this pen. See, and then when the shepherd decides to leave and go gather his herd, the gatekeeper would just open the gate. While the shepherd would just stand outside the gate and call his flock. See, he calls his flock and his flock begins to follow because that flock knows their shepherd's voice. Uh, See, if you know your shepherd's voice, then you know which way to go. You know who to follow. They know their shepherd's voice. And then the other sheep that are sitting there, they don't recognize that voice. They just stand. They just stand. They don't move. You have to know your shepherd's voice. Know your shepherd's voice. If the thief called out the sheep, none would follow him because they would not recognize the voice. Therefore, there would be no need for the shepherd to sneak over the wall. Notice I say, there's no need for the shepherd to sneak over the wall. Why? Because the sheep knows the voice. Only a thief and the thief's purpose would be to destroy. See, there, they, they, then there is the shepherd, and the shepherd rep- recognizes his voice. He calls them by name. He leads them, and they follow. They feel safe and secure following the voice of their caretaker. And in the midst of their inability to comprehend, Jesus reveals himself for the third time, see, 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 I said the third time, Jesus has to explain to them once again. Why? Because they didn't comprehend. This is a little story. So, there's this man and a guy. They were traveling. So, as they were traveling, they come across a shepherd. So the shepherd and this man starts to have a conversation. The man shows him the place where the sheep were laid at night. So as they're there and they're having a conversation, and they, the man looks at him and says, why is there no door? What about their security at night? So the shepherd says to him, I am the door. See, I am the door. So when the lights go out, I just lay right here because I am the door. And see, and if the sheep want to get out, uh, the sheep have to cross over me. And then, you know who likes sheep? Wolves like to eat sheep. So he says, and if the wolf comes alone and he wants to get in guess what he has to cross over me see that that you got to understand that when you are and you know the voice of your shepherd that 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 enemy that destruction has to cross over your shepherd and if you don't know who your shepherd is by now i'm gonna tell you right now that shepherd is jesus see can't nothing get over jesus that he's not gonna allow into your life you gotta be ready and know the voice Of your shepherd. 
they got to cross over your shepherd. See, crossing over, you ain't just finna, I'm not just finna lay there and you gonna stop, you, you, oh Lord, you gonna just step over me and get to what's mine. Oh no, see, see when I'm just laying there and I see you coming, I hear you coming, I'm gonna stand up. Yeah. Now I'm gonna stand up. Yeah. See, even though the battle may not be yours, but you are equipped for the battle and yeah. you ain't finna let nobody and nothing cross over and take what belongs to you. So Jesus is saying, you can't have my sheep. These are mine. You got to cross over me. You got to get through me. You got to come through me. And see, and when they're all in the pen, the pen may have walls, but see, it's not like the fence. See, the pen is covered. The walls are covered. They go through and they're sitting inside the pen. They're not in the pastures anymore. They're in the pen. The pen is your ark of safety. Yeah. See, when you're in your pen, you are safe. You, you, when you're in your pen, yeah. Jesus has got you covered. When you're in your pen, you ain't got to worry about anything because they got to cross over. They got to go through. And they don't want to cross over or go through. Man, Lord, come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. See, I don't think nobody understanding me right now. See, you don't want to cross over. Jesus is like saying, you don't want to mess with me. Come on now if you want to. Step to me if you want to because I promise you, Jesus said, you won't go back the way you return. I'm telling you, you they, they got to cross over. They got to cross over. They got to go through. Whew. See, Jesus states with authority, I am the gate. He says, I lie in that open place. So my sheep will not wander and the enemy will not take them. I keep my sheep safe and protect them. Yeah. That means Satan has to cross over Jesus to get to us, son. And that is not going to happen. He repeats. I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pasture. I am the gate. There is no other. Enter through this gate. Promise us. Promise us justification. Heaven our sins dealt with effectively. Entering through this gate, promise us regeneration, being made spiritually alive. Entering through this gate, promise us adoption, yeah. adoption, being made a member of God's family yeah. and a joint heir with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Entering through this gate, promise us sanctification, Hallelujah. being transformed into a holy being based on simply on our relationship with God. Yeah. Entering through this gate promise us that we are welcome. There's a welcome mat that says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Also, there are no locks on this gate. Mm -hmm. We can come freely into the comfort of the sheep's pen. Amen. There are no demands made on us through the laws of Moses, we have a place of safety. We have a place of rest. We can go freely into the world knowing that our shepherd continues to watch over us. Yeah. He promised us good pastors. In fact, in Jeremiah 29 and 11, probably one of the most quoted scriptures, a lot of preachers, our pastors have built their ministries off of this here. They built it off the word prophecy. But the word is shalom. See, it means peace. So what God has plans to give us is peace. He don't want us to be wealthy. 
Or we don't have to be wealthy to find the good pastors. The pastors of peace. True peace comes from having faith in our shepherd. The true peace comes from having belief in our shepherd that he shall protect us. He shall never leave us nor forsake us. And his ability to care for us. See, the thief's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. But God says my purpose is to give them a rich and a satisfying life. See, when a thief enters into a sheep pen to steal a sheep, he is not looking for a pet lamb. Uh-huh. When a thief enters the pen to get a sheep, what he's really looking for is his next meal. See, he is looking to kill his prey. Keep in mind that Jesus was describing the religious leaders at this time as thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers. Jesus makes it clear that when a personal gain outweighs the care of a sheep, there is a problem. That's just like a thief. See, see, let, let, let me explain it to you like this. Let me get twenty dollars. Let me get twenty dollars. Anybody got twenty? Well, your twenty goes into my pocket. That's my personal gain. I don't mean no good for you for your twenty. So, so, so now I'm coming, just like the thief, my personal gain. So when you think about the Pharisees and back then, it was all about personal gain for them. It was all about personal gain. And so, so they was just like the thieves and the robbers climbing the fence. Personal gain. See, Jesus claims his purpose is to care for the sheep and provide them with a, an, an exceedingly life full of joy, full of satisfaction. In, 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 in Matthew 22 and 37, it says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor. So, with that being said, I want you to understand something. Now, the shepherd, the shepherd leads his flock. There is one thing that the shepherd does not do. The shepherd does not go and get sheep. Now, how do we get more sheep? Sheep beget sheep. So what I'm saying is people beget people. We want to grow our churches. We want to grow in numbers. We want to grow here and grow there. But it takes people to get people. We got to go out and teach. We got to go out and encourage. We got to go out and lead. We got to bring others to our shepherd so our shepherd can help God and they can realize and understand and recognize the voice of our shepherd. See, now I don't want y'all to get this miss wrong. I don't want you to misunderstand it. I, I want y'all to really truly get this. Jesus is our ultimate shepherd. <laughs> Lord, Help me with this one, Lord. But let me tell you something. So when we come to this beautiful church, I I haven't been here a lot because I've been working with my fellas and guys over there, but I watch you on Facebook Live. So Facebook Live right now is the edifice of helping being part of the church. But we still need to grow in numbers. And we still have a great shepherd. We have a great shepherd that runs this flock that sits here and he looks high and he looks low for us. He's here to guide us, strengthen us, lead us in all ways. We need to bring him more sheep. More sheep. More sheep. We should never stop bringing sheep. Because the only way we get more sheep is if the sheep go out and do what they got to do. Sheep 
beget sheep. Amen. What a word God has given us to reflect on as we go throughout this week as Reverend Green was preaching. I was thinking about some questions we need to ask ourselves. Have we entered through the gates ourselves? Do we really know the voice of the Father? And if we do know the voice, are we following his direction? And those are some questions that each of us can take with us throughout this week to reflect upon. And if you are under the sound of my voice and you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have an opportunity to enter through the gate. You have an opportunity to commit your life to the Lord and if you are joining us on Facebook live and you have never quite accepted the Lord you may have gone to church as a youth you may pop on to virtual services every now and then but you've never truly made that commitment to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior this is your opportunity to do just what Reverend Green was just preaching about and enter through the gate so that you can know the ultimate Shepherd and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if this is you, we would ask that you would type into your, the comment section and say, I'm accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And we will be reaching out to you to pray with you. Or if you're under the sound of my voice and you may have entered through the gate, but then somewhere along the way, you turned and went down a different path. And after hearing Reverend Green, you realize you wanna make a recommitment to Jesus, this is your opportunity. Please also top into the comment section and say that you're returning to the Lord. Or if you're under the sound of my voice and you're looking for a church home, we are on every Sunday virtually in this time, in this season, in this space. We have an opportunity, as Reverend Green was saying, to reach beyond the walls to reach you where you are. And if you are looking for a church home, we would love to have you as a part of this victorious family right here at Victory AME Church, where the Reverend Michael B. Price is our senior pastor. If you fall into that category, please type in the comment sections and we would like to be in contact with you. We thank you for joining us today. We thank you, Reverend Green, for that word. We will carry it with us throughout this week and we will reflect on hearing the voice of God and not only hearing his voice and recognizing his voice, but also allowing that voice to guide us. Amen and amen. We have now come to the time in this service where you have the opportunity to give. If you're joining us online, the opportunities through which you can give are being placed in the, the comment section. You may give to us via Givelify through the church website. We would ask that you would give in any number of ways so that we can do the work of God through this victorious church. Let us give God some praise. Let's give God some glory. We thank God for this opportunity to worship in this worship experience. There may be some announcements to come forth. We are continuing our strategic planning this Tuesday night um, for Bible study. There is also an opportunity if you need your statement for the last year for your taxes, there is a request form that I believe is being sent out via email where you can make a request for um, that information so that you may use it for tax purposes. 
and that is also being placed in the comment section on Facebook or posted on Facebook as well so that you may request that information. Are all hearts clear? We will ask that Reverend Green come and give us our benediction.